Office Suite for 27 years now, and uh, just started with OneNote, I believe, about five years ago when it uh, at its inception. OneNote 2010 is one of my favorite products to date because it allows you to completely organize your life. Whether it's your work life, your personal life, whatever it is, it is the best organizational tool I have seen. And it is completely integrated into the Microsoft Office Suite. So you'll be able to see how it connects with Outlook, it connects with Word, it connects with PowerPoint. And not only that, but it is integrated across all platforms. What that means is, if you take notes on your computer, and then let's say you have to go to court or wherever you want to wherever you go, you can have it on your cell phone, your Android, your iPad, your Kindle. Every single piece of hardware that I know of has a free app that you can access all of your information. So it is a cross-platform tool. It is also an amazing collaboration tool because you can have notebooks, places that you take notes, um, that you share with as many or as few people as you'd like. So think of a notebook as being a binder. And uh, let's say you have different cases. You could have one binder per case. Um, personally, I have one binder for tech notes. I have one binder for my financial notes. I have one binder for recipes. I have all sorts of one binder for travel. And so you can have as many of these as you want and share each of them with different people or with no one. So we're going to look at OneNote now. This is uh, what team up on your screen, a note, and I'd like to start out by showing you the, um, the organization of it, okay? So up here, first of all, I'm not a big fan of how OneNote starts up. Uh, in that, notice that you've got little tabs up here called Home, Insert, Share, etc., but you're not really seeing your entire ribbon, okay? So over in the right-hand corner, do you notice that there is a little down arrow? And if you press that down arrow, do you see how it drops down your ribbon so that you can see what options are available to you? If anybody has any questions, please feel free to interrupt me at any time. So first of all, it's nice to see a ribbon, and it's nice to be able to see your notebook. Right now you have one notebook called Personal, and do you see how it's sort of smashed up to the left-hand side, so it's kind of closed? I would like to open that up. So do you see right above it, there's another arrow. If I click on that, do you see how it opens up my notebook area? Right? So OneNote comes with, OneNote 2010, comes with your first notebook when you sign on. Whoever's shuffling papers, if you wouldn't mind not, because we hear all of that. But um, so we're in our first personal notebook, and it's interesting that it's called personal, because one thing that Microsoft tells you is do not create super huge notebooks like one called personal and one called business, and yet that's the first one they give you. We're going to create a new notebook ourselves, and the way to create a new notebook is you click on the word file and click on new. Okay? Just like any other thing, whether it's Excel, Word, whatever, file new will start. Now, when you get here, you have three choices of where to store your new binder. One is on your computer. Understand that anything that's on your computer is accessible only on your computer. Okay, so when I started, I thought I'm going to be safe and I'm going to put everything on my computer. The problem with that is you can't access it from anywhere else nor can anyone else if you're going to share. So the next one up is network. Network means you're going to put it somewhere on your network, which means other people that share your network would be able to get to it as long as they have access to that folder, but you're still not going to see it on your phone, on your iPad, and those. So in the long run, I put all of my notebooks on the web, which also lets me access everything from the website. There is a OneNote web app. Right now, I'm going to just do it on my computer, okay? And you can always change it. You can always change the location by sharing it elsewhere. So then I'm going to give it a name. Yes, do you have a question? Already, yeah, it's about the sharing. Yes. So I have a Chrome computer. I don't have Microsoft on my home computer or my phone. Can I use this still? By, do I have 
the web app? You can go to the web app from anywhere. As long as you have internet access, you can go to the web app. Microsoft is willing to share it? On the web app, yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm not sure where they get out of it. That's okay. <laughs> well, because you, you, you have it here. Right. Right. So you have purchased it here, and they're willing to let you access it from anywhere. That is true. And um, in order to access it from anywhere, however, you're going to have to have some sort of Microsoft account, uh, which may be provided to you by Northwest Justice Project or wherever you work, but you do need to have a place to store it on the web, and it's got to be a Microsoft uh, Live account. So those of you who don't have a Microsoft Live account work at work, you would have to create your own, which is also free. It just means you're going to create an MSN account, a Hotmail account, an Outlook.com account, any sort of Microsoft account, which is free, and then you have free storage as well. Okay, but you should have one at your work site. So getting back to the creation of a notebook, what would you like the first notebook to be? How do you see yourself using a place where you're going to take notes? Are you going to use it for trial notes? Are you going to use it for research? Are you going to use it for computer notes? What, what do you think you want to use it for? Sample brief. Brief. Sample brief? Okay. So we're going to call this sample brief. Okay. And notice where it's storing it. If you store it on your C drive, this will be the default storage location. If you want it to be something else, you would browse to a different location. But for now, we're just going to leave it there, so I'm going to click on Create Notebook. And notice that now I've got a notebook called Sample Brief. So here's the notebook. So I've got two notebooks now, one called Sample Brief and one called Personal. And under Sample Brief, I have something here called a new section. If you own a binder, you know when you have things in a binder that you want to keep separate, you put little tabs in it to section it off? That's what a section is. A section is just a tab in a binder. So you're not actually typing anything into it, you're just giving it a name to organize. Okay? So how do you think you would rename this section? Those of you who've taken a class from me before know there's only one right answer. Does anybody remember it? Right click. right click. That's exactly right. Where do I right click? I right click on whatever it is I'm trying to do. So if I'm trying to change the section name, I'm going to right click with my right mouse button and do that, rename. So I can click on rename. That is one way to do it. Another way, those of you who are Excel users know that when you see a tab like this, and by the way, this is exactly the same, just a duplicate, I can do what? Go to the I can double click. So I can either right click or double click. And what are we going to call this new? Is, is this going to be a name of a brief? Or yeah. maybe like category of like family law. Okay, so, okay, I actually, I'm, I'm going to make this the name of a brief because I'm going to tell you where we're going to put family law in a second. So what would this be, the name? Jones. Jones. Yes. Jones v. Jones? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Okay, now, to create another section or another tab, one way would be to come over here and right click. Right click. Remember, right click is the only right answer. Or those of you who are Excel users know that this extra little tab also allows you to do that. So I can just click on that. And this is going to be uh, Thomas v. Thomas. Not that I know what I'm talking about, but I'm putting it in anyway. So now... I was told what I wanted to do was have a tab for family law. Well, in this case, so we've got sections, but if we have a bigger grouping, there is something called a section group. So what we're going to do now is we'll put in a section group and put these sections in it. And then if we have another kind of law, like criminal law, we can create another section group. Again, a section group is sort of like a mega tab. It's not something you type into. It's just for organization purposes. So how would we get a new section group? Right-click. We right-click. Right so we're going to right-click on any section. And notice when we right-click on any section, notice it says section, new section group. Okay. So we're going to click on new section group. 
And this is where we're going to type in family law. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't let us put this section where, group wherever we want. It always falls to the very bottom. I don't know why. It's what Microsoft does. So it does mean that after you create the section group, you're going to have to drag the section called Thomas v. Thomas and the section Jones v. Jones on top of it. Now you will be able to create new sections under this section group, but that's just the way it works. Okay? The nice thing about a section group is you can double click on it if you want to collapse it. You can double click if you want to bring it back. Okay? So we've got three levels of organization now. We've got one called sample briefs, which is a notebook level. Underneath that, we've got a section group, and underneath that we have some sections, right? But that's all worthless if we have no place to type. Well, we do have a place to type, and it's called a page. Over mm -hmm. here, this is a page. And this mm -hmm. page is under Thomas B. Thomas. So if we want Jones B. Jones on top of Thomas B. Thomas, I can drag it. Notice as I drag, I have this black line going across. Make sure you always see the black line. It's going to tell you where it's going to drop. Never drop on top of something. Always make sure you see a black line and drop it. Okay? So now we've got them in alphabetical order. They don't need to be. You can do whatever you want with that. But we have a page over here. And so what are we going to name this page? Maybe we'll go into Jones v. Jones. So would this be one of the briefs for Jones v. Jones then? Uh, yes. Okay, so what, yes. what would the brief name? Petitioner's brief. Petitioner's brief. Like that? Yes. Okay, so at this point, what would go in here? Would some text go in here or? Uh, the it would be your brief. Note. Huh? It'd be your notes on the brief? Yes. Link to the brief? Or a link to the brief? No. Okay. A note. 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 Yes. Notes on the brief. Yes. Okay. So the the nice thing is any of those things are possible. You can have just the notes. You can have the whole brief. You can have whatever it is you want. Um, if you only put in notes uh, or a link, just understand. Let's say you're in court and you want to use this. You have your computer there and you want to use this. If you don't have access to wherever this is stored, so if you don't have internet access or whatever, just understand you need access to wherever you've stored this information. So if it's crucial to, for you to have it when you are in court or whatever, you may want to put the whole brief in there just so that you're sure you have everything, you know, and that you don't lose internet connection and all of a sudden not have what you need. But if you had saved your notebook on the web, you'd still have the same problem, right? That you would need internet connection. Absolutely. That's what I'm saying. So if you if you have to have whatever it is when you're in court and you're worried about an internet connection, then I would have the whole thing in here. If you are just using it in at work and you know you're going to have internet connection, not such a big deal, then go ahead and link to it. Because um, obviously if the bad thing about copying it into here is if now you change the brief on your uh, network, it's not going to change in here. So you, you have to know what's best for you. Okay. Is there any way to like, This is always thinking, but um, computer to your network. Like if you uh, edit in something offline and you make it change, to right? Say replace the online version. Okay. So the question was, um, will OneNote sync with documents? So, which the, so not does OneNote sync the notebooks, which it does if you've got it on your web or on your network. It will always be syncing. But the question is, will it sync uh, a Word document or an Excel document? And the answer is no. When you have those documents in OneNote, yeah. they are actually as of that moment in time that you copied them in. Okay, so yeah. so in that sense, having a hyperlink, which you can have, or having a or having notes, 
which will hyperlink to the document. We're going to see if we ever get there at the end of the day. Um, that you're going to be able to take notes on a brief. If you click in a brief and then you go into OneNote and take a note, it will actually have a hyperlink to that very place in the brief. Um, so all you have to do is look at your notes in OneNote, click on it, it'll open up the document on your network and actually bring you right to the very spot that you took the note on. Now once again, make sure, so let's say I'm sharing this, let's say three attorneys are working on the same brief and we all need to be able to see these areas of notes, make sure all three of you have access to that folder on your network. You can always only link to things that you have access to, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and start and so let's say this is um, notes for the brief, okay? So we're not going to put the whole brief in here because I don't have a brief. So let's say they're notes. So I'm going to type in notes, okay? And then down, whoever's typing, if you could stop, that would be super cool because we can hear it. Um, so I'm going to type in my notes and then I'm going to type in conclusions. I don't know if this is real, I'm just trying to teach you one note. <laughs> okay? Yes. So let's say that now we'd like to give this a little bit of formatting. I can click in notes and do you see that we've got, these are called styles. So if you like this look, I can click on it and do you see how it really quickly does a lot of different formatting to it. It made it bigger, it made it older, that sort of thing. Okay. okay. So these are styles. You have heading one, two, three, you have all these different styles mm -hmm. that are used that you can use. I'm gonna sneeze. Okay. So now let's say you've got some notes that you'd like to take uh, in a table format. Okay, you'd like to put a table in here, like in a word table or something like that. So all you have to do is start. Maybe you want some a witness table, okay? So I'm going to type in name. In order to start a table in OneNote, all you have to do is press tab. So I've typed in name. Now I press tab and boom, it started a table mm -hmm. for me. Now I'm going to type in address, press tab, phone, phone. Mm -hmm. email. <laughs> We're getting into this. Okay. So yeah. let's say that's all we need as far as columns are concerned. In a normal row, I would now be able to press tab to go down to the next row. But because we're still in sort of that mode of making columns, pressing tab will just make another column. Right. So on your very first row I'm only, row. we're going to press enter. Ah, okay. So Looks I press like enter. So, yeah. so now I'm going to type in Sandy, the address. the phone number, and all of this is in my handout. So you, you can take notes, absolutely, but you don't have to, okay? So now I'm at the end of my second row, and to get to my third row, what do I press? Tab. Enter. Huh? You said enter. Well, well remember, we had, we, remember we had to press enter on the first one because we were sort of in the, in the, um, business of making columns at that time. So we had to press enter there. But after that first row is done, you can just keep pressing tab and it will continue uh, to make rows for you. It was that first uh, one that we needed because otherwise it would have made another column, right? Right, yeah. Okay. So, um, all right. So I'm going to go back down to the bottom here. And you can press enter or tab if you want on that last row. Because I was on, I'm on this last row. So if you don't want to press tab, but I think it's, yeah, so it's really up to you what you want to do. Question. Um, so what if you want to add another column? You could do that from the first row and hit tab. Great question. Where do you want to add another column? After. Uh, Between email. phone and email? Yeah. Or? Okay. So now. Our table's made and we want to add another column. How do we do that? Well, if you go, notice that when I'm in the table, you have a brand new 
tab that appears called Table Tools. So if you click on that, notice that you've got all your table tools right here. So if you want one between phone and email, all I do is click on phone and click on Insert Right, and you see how it made a new column for me. Okay. So real easy to do, make new columns, rows, whatever you want. Also deleting rows and columns, okay? Okay, so it's also similar to Word in that you can point to any column and make it wider or narrower simply by dragging on these edges here. And the reason I say it's similar is because there are differences. Let me go here and type in another row. Okay, what if I want Roger to come ahead of Sandy? Well, all you have to do, notice that when I'm hovering over this row, notice there's a little box to the left of it. All I have to do is point to that, and you should know a four-headed arrow is always going to be moving, right? So I drag, Roger up, and now he's ahead of Sandy. Okay? And how do you, is there a quick way to undo that? Control Z or undo. Yeah, there's undo is right here. Okay. Okay. By the way, up here, this is called your what? Your quick access toolbar, right? And uh, if you've been to any of the trainings before, you know that Microsoft decides to put it as far away from your workspace as possible, and it's supposed to be the tools you use most often. So the first thing I always do is move it below the ribbon. How do you move it below the ribbon? Anybody who's ever taken a class from me know there's only one right answer? Right click. So I'm going to right click, and do you see where it says show the quick access toolbar below the ribbon? So I click on show the quick access toolbar below the ribbon, and there it is. Okay. So here's undo. And Control-Z is always undo, so you can undo it that way if you want. Okay. What is that doc to desktop? What does that mean? Uh, that's when you can take notes on a Word document or a PowerPoint presentation oh. or someplace on the Internet. We are going to get to that. That's a really important tool for you. You're going to like that one a lot. But um, all right. So, so far, we have a page, right? What if we want another page? How do we get another page? Well, right above it, do you see where it says New Page? So I can click on New Page, and so here's my petitioner's brief, and here's my new page. Okay. Now, this page is on the very same level as the page ahead of it, which is fine. But what if you'd like it to be a sub-page? Okay. What if you decide on this first page I want notes and conclusions, but then on my other page I would like this table? So I'm going to select the table. I made it a little bit big. <laughs> um, I'm going to cut it. I'm going to go to this page, and I want to call this witness list. Okay? But it's the witness list for this petitioner's brief. So I'd like to show that it is sort of a sub-page. All I have to do to create a sub-page is just drag it a little bit to the right, and it becomes a sub-page. Okay? So now I'm going to click on New Page again. Notice when I click on New Page again, it always drops it to the bottom, and it always comes way over to the left. What if I want another sub-page? Well, if I point to a page, do you see this little icon to the left? That icon will put the page right where this black line is. So if I want another page right below witness list, I can click on this icon, and instead of having to have pages drop to the bottom and then move them over, they are right where I want them to be. Okay? So maybe I could have opposing counsel information or whatever. Any questions on that? Going back to our witness list, I did want to show you a couple other neat things about the table. Um, if you want, let's say, a new row between Sandy and name, all you have to do is click in front of Sandy, so click at the very beginning of the row, and just press Enter. 
really easy to make new rows. If I prefer to have a row after Sandy, I just have to click in the same spot and press Control Enter. So Enter will put a row ahead, Control Enter a row below. There are lots of neat little tricks like that in the tables here that are not in Word, and I go over every single one of them. So I can't but we don't have enough time today to go into all that, so I want to keep moving forward. Where can we get the handout? Yeah, um, that is a really good question that you might want to ask Brian Rowe, because I haven't a clue where he puts those things. Sorry. He's, and he's on jury duty today, so um, he's not in, but just shoot him an email and ask him where to get the handout. Because it's a whole, I don't know, like, 60, 70 page handout, so it covers just everything. So if you're not taking copious notes, you don't need to. Okay? So, so far, so we have not just one level of subpage, we actually have two different levels of subpage. Are they really any different? No. They just organizationally allow you to see that these things are grouped. Okay? Again, when you have subpages, notice what you can do. You'll get these little arrows appear and you can close them up. So organizationally, it's kind of a cool thing, okay? The other thing you can do is now that the, uh, it moved that whole family of pages below the other one just by dragging. So it is really kind of a neat thing to be able to have these subpages over here and sections over here. Now, these pages so far, they've all been blank, and that's fine. You may just want a blank page, but what if you don't? Wouldn't it be nice if there were some page templates out there that you could use? So if you click on the down arrow next to new page is what I just did, click on this down arrow, and notice just a regular new page appears or a sub page. But underneath that, there's this page templates tool. When you click on it, notice there's a bunch of choices already there. So let's say we would like some sort of business template. If I click on business template, it shows me some templates I can get simply by clicking on them. So if you're going to go into a meeting and you say, you know what, I don't really want to create a whole thing myself, all you have to do is come in and notice it created a new page. So it's not going to apply the template to a current page. You're going to want to think ahead, and it's going to put it on a new page, and then you're going to type into it. Okay. So, like, if you'd gotten the agenda by email on a Word document, you could go copy that text and just stick it in there. Absolutely. Absolutely, you can do that. Um, and these are bulleted notes, so you can start typing, press enter, and they will continue with bullets. Okay. So this one happens to be formal meeting notes, which I happen to like, so I picked it. But there's lots of other ones. Here's detailed meeting notes. Uh, personal meeting notes, so you can, you know, you can choose different ones if you'd like. Often, though, you may pick one, so here's the one that I like, and you say, you know, for the most part I like it, but um, I don't need this opening thing. You know, this whole thing is sort of not something I use, or maybe I don't use this approval of agenda thing. Whatever it is you don't want, or whatever you want to change, just make those changes, and then the cool thing is, notice down here on the bottom right, it says Save Current Page as Template. So you can click on Save Current Page as Template and call it whatever name you want to call it, and you can use that from then on in. So you can have a bunch of your own templates. Now, if you say, in this section, all I'm ever going to use is this template, then notice you can set this as a default template for new pages, so every time you click on new page in this section, it will use this template. I don't use that so much, but I definitely use templates that I've created. Yes, question? On, on this page, on the opposite side of the page from where it says meeting title, can you just start typing? Okay, so the question was, um, over yeah. here, can I just start typing? And that's a brilliant question. Because 
that is one thing that's very different about OneNote is that you can click and type anywhere and a placeholder will appear wherever it is you start typing. So, um, so the question was, can I click and type here? You can click and type anywhere you want and do you see this is called a placeholder because it will hold whatever it is you type and this uh, title bar up at the top, you can drag it anywhere you want it to go. So it is not at all a linear program like Word or Excel or anything like that. You can just click and type anywhere you want. In that sense, it's very much like PowerPoint. And then you drag it, like if you wanted it to go under approval of minutes, you drag it there? Yeah, you can drag it anywhere you want. I mean, I would have typed it where I wanted it to go to begin with, but you can certainly type it anywhere and then drag it anywhere. And if you put it under approval of minutes, would it? I personally it wouldn't. Help us? I would no. I would not personally put it under approval of minutes. If I want something under there, I would just click and type it under there, and it would go within the uh, the placeholder that's already there. Now you've got placeholder on top of placeholder. It's more for you want you know something over here, and then something completely different over here, a picture or maybe a question mark. I want to get back to this, whatever it is you're trying to do. But but yes, you can have as many different placeholders as you want. Um, okay, so any questions on these different uh, templates? Are any of the templates like Excel so that you could do like a budget? Or are they all Word based? Well, I don't know if that's Word, but. They're not Word based and they're not Excel. Um, are there any that do adding and subtracting? Okay, really good question. Basic math is really easy to do. In, um, so let's go ahead. I'm going to take away this PowerPoint. I mean this, uh, not PowerPoint, this uh, area over to the right. And to do math in simple math, all you have to do is if you want to say 5 plus 10 equals, and then you just hit your space bar or 210 times 9 equals, so basically you just need, and the, notice the multiplication is not an X, but rather a star like in, in Excel, but as long as you have that, you just need to do an equals and a space bar, and it will put in the math for you. Now, it's not like Excel in that, if I change this 9 to a 10, it's not going to change the, the answer. You, it, as of that moment in time. So if you change the 9, whoops, didn't mean to do that. If you change the 9 to a 10, you're going to have to delete this answer and press space bar. Okay. In OneNote 2013, the next release of OneNote that's currently out, they do um, allow you to import Excel spreadsheets or use Excel. So that is a really nice new feature. But um, it has other nice new features like also being able to sort your table, which you currently, you can sort it yourself by hand, but you can't use the sort feature. So there are some neat new features. Um, but in this release, at least, you do have some math here. Okay? Any other questions? Okay. Another feature that I love in OneNote is this tag feature. Tags, if I click on this down arrow down here, allow you to create checklists or uh, say that something is important or you have questions on it. So let's say you've got a meeting and you have a question on this agenda item, okay? All you have to do is either press control 3, notice the top nine tags allow you to have shortcut keys. But I'm going to click on that and do you see how it put a question mark right there? So that later I can come back and uh, ask a question or figure it out. Maybe I also want to put an importance here, and maybe this is important and I have a question on it. And then maybe down here I've got some to-dos, so I'm going to click on to-do. And by the way, this is a checkable box. Okay? So if I come down here, maybe I have, so that's an open issue. I'm going to have another open issue. And so I can just keep having these to-dos. Can you make it go through your whole notebook and find all the to-dos? That is such a great question. 
The, great, the question is, can you have it go through your entire notebook and find all the to-dos? Wouldn't it be nice if all of your important things and all of your questions and all of your to-dos could be grouped together? And so there's this thing called Find Tags. So when you click on Find Tags, that's exactly what it just did. Here's your important, here's your questions, and here's your to-dos. And not only that, I feel like I'm an infomercial, not only that, but look at this, create summary page. If I click on create summary page, it just gathered all of your questions, all of your importance, and all of your to-dos on one page. Now, if it were me, I would print this, and then I would delete this page. Because if you leave this page, and you hit create summary page again, you're going to get duplicates of everything because it's going to regather everything. Does that make sense? Because these are just a page like every other page. So if I create another summary page, it's going to gather all of these items from the original page plus the summary page. It would double it. And no big deal when it doubles it, then you realize you need to go back and delete it and recreate. Now, if, so I can always right-click on this and delete it. Um, I'm going to go back to, where was I? Petitioner's brief? No. Oh, it was a meeting thing. That's what it was. This one. Okay. So the question, though, was, can I see, well, I don't know if the question was this or not, but um, an important question could be, could I just see the things that I have yet to do? I don't want to see the things I've already done. I want to see the things that are unchecked. So notice that you can say show only unchecked items. So now you're only seeing the things that you still have to do, okay, because they're unchecked. Now, if you add anything to this list, if I come down here and add some more or maybe I even uncheck an item or whatever, then to get a complete list, you're going to want to make sure you click on refresh results in order to have it go through and make sure that it's got everything that you put in that's new or different than before. Does it go back out? And like, if you check it in this summary list, does it go back to the document and say check? No. So it doesn't go both ways. You can't check, okay, I did that, and then it'll go out to the job document and say she did that. No. You want to check this and then you're going to want to refresh the results, and then you're going to see that you only have one item that's unchecked. But out in the page that you originally pulled it from. Well, I deleted it. No, the original page that. This is the original page. I deleted no, the summary page. No, I don't mean that. I mean, like, some of those things came from meeting title. Your minutes. I am in min meeting title. I am in minutes. Did you go through several documents? I, um, well, you mean. This is, this is the document, and then from this, I created a summary page. Well, oh, I was asking originally, can you go make, it, make a summary of all your documents that you do? So you have the meet, meet minutes for three meetings. Ah, gotcha. Okay, so want. what she is asking now is how many different pages can be involved in this gathering of um, tags? which is an outstanding question. <laughs> and so that, that is not just an outstanding question for finding tags, but for finding absolutely anything in OneNote. In OneNote, when you search, whether it's for tags or anything else, do you see where it says search down here, sort of in the bottom right? Do you see it says this notebook? <laughs> so it would have searched every single page in this notebook and gathered those items. Now, if you, so it's really important for you to decide, so you can have this page group, which means a page and all the subpages for this one page, uh, this section, which means everything in this section, this section group, which means everything in family law, you know, this notebook, which means everything in sample brief, or all notebooks, which means every single notebook you have open. Like in my travel notebook, I have a checklist for things to bring on trips so I don't have to remember what things to bring anymore, so I'm not racking my brain every trip I go on. If I had all notebooks, 
it would bring in every single check under there as well. So it is really important to segment and to decide what it is you want to bring in. But to answer your question, absolutely any sort of amount that you want to bring in are, is possible. You just have to click on it here. Any questions on that? And you've noticed that I'm going to take off this only show unchecked items so that you can see them all again. Notice that this is being sorted or grouped, I should say, by tag, okay? So that's what it's telling you, by tag name. You can also group it by section, assuming you're doing multiple sections, by title, by date, by te note text, which means the text in each of these notes. So you can group them differently if you want, okay? Any questions on that? Because tags are wonderful. Now, what's even more wonderful about tags, in my opinion, is that you don't have to use, if I click on this down arrow, you don't even have to use the ones that they give you. In fact, you can delete any you want uh, just by removing a tag. So if I click on Customize Tags, I can change any of these if I want, or I can add a new tag. So in other words, I could add a tag called Sue, and maybe I want Sue to do things for me. Okay, I can give her a new symbol. I'll give her a smiley face. I could give her a new font color. I'm not going to. I could give her a highlight color. I could do any of those things. Click on OK. She will be the top one. Now, you may want it on top or not. Remember, the first nine you can have these quick shortcut keys for, so it's up to you. Most people like to leave to do's as their number one. If you don't want it to be number one, notice I can use my up or down arrow to move it wherever I'd like, okay, and click on OK. So now, if I want Sue to work on this, I can click, and then I can come up here and click on Sue. And let's say I want Sue to do this also, which control four is Sue. So now, this is a perfect example. I don't have Sue over here at all, right? So if I refresh my results, now I get to do stuff in here as well. It went back out and relooked to see what else it could find. But how cool would this be if you've got a group of five people that are going to work on these items, and you could just click on it, and then it would be under their name, and you could sort of see really quickly what it is you need to do. Okay? So tags are a huge and neat item. Similar to tags, if I go to the, uh, where is it now? Next, yeah, go ahead now. So I'm picturing myself using this. So good. Oh, now I'm out. Whatever. I'm, I'm on the ferry. I don't have Wi-Fi. Yes. And I think I have something I want Sue to do. Yes. So I write a little note and I put the Sue by it. Yes. But that note isn't on the web yet. Right. It's on my phone. Correct. So can it ever get to the web? Yeah. Not the, the re refresh results, or is that? No. Okay. So a really good question is, assuming that you're going to be saving these somewhere on the web, which I think you absolutely ought to, then whenever I'm in a plane or on the ferry or wherever I am, any notes that I take in OneNote at that time will obviously only be stored locally, but the second I get to a place where there is Wi-Fi, it's going to be syncing, which is why, unlike Word and Excel, where you know you close an Excel workbook when you're done, you close a, a Word document when you're done, in OneNote, unless you're pretty much not using your binders anymore, you're just going to always leave them there. And so, because you're just going to always leave them open. You might close one note, but you're not going to close any of the binders. They're always just going to stay there because they are just going to constantly be syncing. Okay? And you're actually going to see, you're not right now because this is a computer-based notebook, but you're going to see a little green, uh, a little green uh, circle when it's syncing properly. Then you go on the plane or on the, on the boat, and you're going to see a red uh, it's going to turn red, so showing you that it's no longer sinking. So, but 
every single time. You can take as many notes as you want. The second you hook up, it's going to sync. And you can edit an already existing note and it will sync. Yes, it'll always, always sync everything you've done. Just not that word definition. Within the note, it's going to make the note the same. It's going to make the note, it, it, everything in one note is going to be synced. Everything in Word and Excel is not going to sync into OneNote, no. Okay, it is. It is the most awesome product. One person, I, I don't know how many of you have trouble with putting your keys in different places when you get home and never being able to find them, but that's me. I feel like I'm a really organized person, but I was always leaving my keys, so my husband finally said, okay, there's a bowl in the kitchen, and you're going to use that from now on. That's one note for me. I don't know if you guys have your own computers at home, but if you do, you've installed software, right? And when you do, you have those product keys. When it comes time for me to get a new computer and find those product keys, it's a nightmare. It's like, where did I organize it to? They're always going to be in one note. If I, I've got four children, they all have combination bike locks. If I find a bike lock and it's like, oh my God, what's the combination? I don't need to know where to look. It's going to be in OneNote. My recipes are going to be in OneNote. My technical notes are going to be in OneNote. I never have to worry about my installation notes are going to be in OneNote. Never have to worry about where is something. I know it's in OneNote. And so the nice thing is up here where it says search all notebooks, this is the area where I was telling you earlier that it has the same kind of scope but the second I type in anything, like I'll type in opening, look at that. It's going to show me in every single notebook in OneNote, it's going to bring me right there. I've got recipes in OneNote. So when I go to the store in the evening and I forget what kind of ingredients need to go in the recipe, I just open my OneNote and boom. I type in tomatoes, I can see every recipe that calls for tomatoes. It's the most fabulous product. And I waste so much less time in my life because everything is in one place. Again, here, you're going to want to determine the scope of the search. It's going to default to all notebooks. But sometimes that's going to yield way too many results. So then you can say, hey, I just want to find it in this section or just on this page or just this notebook. You always have those choices. And notice that all notebooks right now is the default. But I could check on this section group, and then I could click on the down arrow again and set it as the default, and that could be my new default until I decide to change it again. Okay? If you ever want to just find it on a page but not make it the default, you can always press Control-F, as you do in every application for find, and you can type in what you want to find. Remember earlier I told you that you can share notebooks with whomever you want. So let's say now this family law, I now want to share with somebody else. So I can be in the notebook and I can say share this notebook. When I do, first of all, notice that it says Windows Live is not currently available. I have to have a Windows Live account, whether it's through where you work or privately, you have to have that. And so then you're going to share it on the web. So our, is our NJP email address the Windows Live account? It ought to be. But that would be a good tech support question because I don't know. But it, you ought, it ought to be. So, so then it's going to ask if you want to share it on the web, okay? And it's this notebook, right? And if, you, if this were available and you could continue, what it, what it would ask next is, who do you want to share it with? Okay. And you would just type in their email address. What's going to happen is it's going to site to share your notebook. When you share a notebook, you have two levels of permission you can give. One is to allow them to only review, just look at, or edit. Those are the only two. Review, edit. Okay. Um, if you're going to share, something that's really important to know is there's two places that you need to share. One is what folder you're going to stick it in. This is not a folder. This is a notebook, right? But you're going to put it in a folder, just like you put Excel documents in folders, Word documents. And everything always gets stored in a folder, right? That folder needs to have permission for that person to get into it. 
Now, what they don't tell you, which I found out the hard way, is so I made a folder, and let's say I put four names on it. I put the names of, let's say, all my kids on it. And then inside it, I thought, I'm going to stick a notebook, and this kid can share this notebook. This kid can share this notebook. And I thought that would work because the folder had all four names, so they could all get into the folder, and then they'd only each be able to look at their notebook. No. Whatever level, whoever has access to that folder has access to all notebooks within the folder. So what I'm trying to tell you here is, for every different set of sharing permissions, let's say you want this notebook to be shared with these three people and another notebook to sh be shared with these two people, create a new folder. For each different set of people that you're sharing with, create a new folder and put the notebook in that folder. Okay? But very simple to do once you get started, you'll find. Very easy to do and very easy to share. So like I have my travel folder shared with my husband. Since he's retired, he can go in and put all the different places, you know, that we're going to go. And, uh, and do some research on restaurants, and then I can find all of that on my phone if I want, or computer, or on the web app. Um, now, I'm not sure if there is Outlook. Let me see if there's Outlook, I hope, on this computer, because this is not mine. This is your guy. Let's also see if it opens up. Hopefully it will. I don't know who it's going to open up as. Uh, you guys probably don't want to give me your name, huh? So put in <laughs> your email. Um, okay, so I can't set one up, which is too bad. But in Outlook, there is a send to OneNote look tool on the ribbon. I don't know if you've seen it. It looks uh, it looks purple. It looks like OneNote. And so you can be on an email, and you can click on that tool, and it will ask you where in OneNote would you like to store this email. So every email flight confirmation I have, every email uh, hotel confirmation, Hertz rental car, all those things go to OneNote. Any email, whether it's on a trial or whatever it is, you can send to OneNote and put it wherever you want, and then it's available to you. It's not linked or anything. It's just placed right into OneNote. Yeah? Um, if the email has an attachment, will that go to and that? Uh, I don't believe the attach. I don't think the attachment will show up. But to be honest, I'd have to check. Try it. Take you two seconds to find out. I wish I could answer the question. Um, now, notice that in, on this computer, there's Internet Explorer and Chrome. When you are using OneNote, if you want to send something from the Internet into OneNote, you're going to want to use Internet Explorer because that's a Microsoft product, right? So Microsoft cares about its own only. And so what you're going to do, oh, please, let's get to the Internet, hopefully, yay. Okay. One of the neat things, let me get to a story, or let me get to uh, – going to bring up something. Let's say you come in here and you go, wow, this, this is something that I would really like to have, although it doesn't look like it went into it, did it? I guess it did. Okay, so I'd like this to be in my OneNote, okay, for whatever reason. Select whatever it is. It can have a picture too. It doesn't matter. But then if I right-click on it, do you see that because I'm in Internet Explorer, only available in Internet Explorer, when you right-click on anything that you've highlighted on the Internet, it's going to have Send to OneNote. So I click on Send to OneNote, and this is the same thing that's going to appear if you had been sending an email to OneNote. It's going to ask where you want it. Okay? Now, the important thing here is, are you going to click on the section, or are you going to click on the page? If you click just on the section, the nice thing is it's going to create a new page and put this on the new page. If you click on the page, it's just going to put it on the bottom of that page, just so that you know the difference. Okay? So if I click on this section and click on OK, and I go to OneNote, notice that all of the 
ingredients are here now. Okay, it even gave it a nice page name, everything. And it even put in a link to that website. So should you want to go back to the website, all you have to do is click and it'll bring you straight back to that website. So once again, you're doing any sort of research on the internet and it will automatically link. Okay? But it didn't keep the directions. I didn't show the directions. I just showed the ingredients. If I wanted the directions, I would have had to come to this tab. And then you would have put it in the same note. Yeah, so let's do that. So what I can do is I can now highlight this. Normally, this is, I've never seen actually this sort of layout. Normally the directions and the, they're all in one. So this is kind of interesting to me. But I'm going to right click again at the bottom, send to OneNote. And so this time it was, where did I, it was, it was under Thomas. So I, uh, it was Mediterranean breakfast. Okay, so I'm going to click on OK. And it will put it right below. And again, there's going to be a, uh, another link, so, you know, a lot of times I would, in that case, I'd probably delete out one of the links. Okay? Another nice feature that really has... Huh? Exactly. Now, let's say you're just a hard and fast Chrome user and you just go, you know what, even though that's kind of cool, I could care less because I'm a Chromey and I, you know, or I'm a Firefox person and I just hate Internet Explorer. That's fine. Go ahead and use what you want. And instead of using the cool send to OneNote feature, just do your regular old copy. Okay, control C or however you like copying. Control D paste. And it really is identical. It gives you the link just like before. You know, it's just a different way of doing the same thing. So you can always use copy paste. It's just a cool little send to OneNote thing if you want to use that. But, um, but either way is fine. Okay, now this really is not a OneNote feature. Well, this is a Microsoft feature that you hopefully have already used a lot of. It's called Insert Screenshot, or Screen Clipping in this case. It's in every single Microsoft application, including Outlook, Word, everything. That what you do is you click on Insert Screen Clipping. It will immediately shrink your screen that you're currently on and show you whatever you last looked at. So it's really important that whatever it is you're trying to copy was what you last looked at. All right, so if now I would like to take a screenshot, notice I've got these crosshairs. I hold my mouse button down, drag across whatever I'd like to take a screenshot of, let go, and boom, that's right exactly where my insertion point was. Let's do that one more time because people always forget that it has to be the last thing you looked at. So please be certain. Let's say I want to take a picture of this. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to come in here. There we go. So this looks like it's maybe more of the entire recipe. It is. Okay. And I would like to take a screenshot of this. Make sure I go straight from here into the OneNote don't, don't stop at Internet Explorer. Make sure it's straight back into OneNote because as soon as I click on Screen Clip, it's going to shrink. It's going to bring me back to the last thing I was at. I'm going to drag across whatever it is that I'd like to have a screenshot of, let go, and boom. It's right where my insertion is. Huh? Pretty, some of it was above the screen. Yeah, screenshot is screenshot. You could, you, if you shrink the screen a little bit, so that it, it has to fit on the screen, yeah. So you can do two of them. You can do the top half and the bottom half, something like that. But so screenshot is really neat. And the other neat thing is if I now type in quinoa, which I think all these are, notice that it finds the text even in a screenshot. That's not normal. It's finding text in a picture because it turns everything that you paste into OneNote, it turns it into OCR. So it can actually read all of the text. In fact, many times you can right click on that picture and you can actually copy text from the picture. Now, 
it may not be pretty because it's going to remove all formatting, all tables, all everything. But if you have something that you say, gosh, I would really like to not have to retype all this, you can copy the text and paste it somewhere. Okay, so I can show you how unpretty this is. I'm going to do a copy text from picture, paste. Better than nothing, I mean, if you wanted to have something that you could manipulate, it's there. It's pretty cool. Okay, any questions on that? Now, before I go on, do can you people stay a little longer? Because I know this was supposed to be the end of class within five minutes. If, if any of you have questions right now, I'd be happy to answer the questions and then continue for a little longer. People on the phone? Okay, I'm going to assume that you're able to stick around and you don't have a question. If you do, please feel free to unmute yourself and ask the question. But um, I want to, we've, done, we've covered most everything on the Home tab, although let me, let me uh, go back for one second to the Home tab. The one thing we didn't cover, I mean, these are all formatting options, and I'm assuming that from all the other programs you know, you know how to format, you know how to cut, copy, paste, so I'm not going to go over that. But this email page, assuming that my Outlook were hooked up, I could click on email page, and what it would do is automatically put this page in the body portion of your email. So it's not an attachment. It would just be right embedded in the body portion of your email. So if somebody doesn't have OneNote for some reason, okay? Um, so insert. You saw me create a table just by pressing tab, but you always have the option to create a table like you do sort of in Word, where you're just going to click on that down arrow, um, you know, and, and through insert. Okay. Okay. Now, notice the table is in a placeholder, right? And we talked about having potentially multiple placeholders. You can have as many placeholders as you want. Okay. Now, all of a sudden, you go, oh, gosh, you know, I really wanted some room up here, and there's no room left. So you would have to go to each of these placeholders and drag their little bars down, which would be a pain. So that's what insert space is. If you click on insert space and you come wherever you'd like to start adding space, and at this point, start dragging down. It's not the coolest graphic known to mankind. Um, it's just insert space. If you insert it too much, if you start further down, you can decrease space. Now you can insert space from left to right too, but do you notice how the arrow is only going to the right? Meaning you can insert space left to right, but you cannot go back. Uh, you can do undo, but you can't just so uh, left to right. I mean right to left thing. So that's this. Inserting a picture is just normal inserting a picture. Screen clipping. You saw me do that, and I do it so often that I like it on my quick access toolbar. How would I add this to my quick access toolbar? Right click. Right click on it, add to quick access toolbar, and boom, it's right there. How cool is that? Links. Many people like to add links to documents and that sort of thing. You can add links to anything. So if I click where I want the link and click on link, I can click on this guy here, and it'll browse the internet and get an internet link. I can click on this one to link to a Word document or an Excel document or whatever. What's going to happen if I do get one of these? I don't know if there's any documents on here. Um, okay, I'm just going to put a link to this chrysanthemum. Um, so what happened was it put in a link to the chrysanthemum, and that's all you're going to see, or you're see a W for Word or Excel or whatever. So you're not going to actually see the item. You're just going to see the link to the item. So then you'd have to click on it. It's going to say it's potentially dangerous. You're going to say, yes, I understand that, and it'll bring it up. Okay? So what some people might want to do, perhaps under Jones v. Jones, is put links to the 10 documents that you have on in your folder, right? for that, so it's just another way of accessing that information. But what it would do is just go to the network and open it up in Word or Excel or whatever. 
And those, of course, are always up to date because you're not really opening them in OneNote. You're opening them just, you know, in their own state. Can you drag that into your table? Say, let's say you haven't sorted things yet. So I would probably like, cut and paste it into my table because dragging it means it's going to be floating on top of the table, but certainly it can be in your table. I could have started out in my table and it would just paste it right into the table. I didn't need to be somewhere else. So, yeah. But if you had weird staring out along the side. Oh, yeah. Always cut and paste them. Yep. So <coughs> you saw me that these will create links to folders and to the Internet. You can also create links to other places within OneNote. So if you want one section to link to another section or a section to link to a page or back and forth, and that, so that's why they're showing you the different box within OneNote. So you can link to a section or anything else. So links are everywhere. Um, you can also attach files if you want to. Um, and then file printout. Unfortunately, since I have no files on my uh, computer, because it's your computer and I guess it's a reformatted one, but, uh, I can't actually show it to you. But what it does is sort of like taking a scanned image in that it will print the document right into OneNote but not as, let's say, a Word document where all the text is editable. It'll be more like a PDF where you see a page printout at a time. You really don't want to do this with a long document. I'd say five, ten pages at the most. Now, what's nice about it is it'll put each page separately. So if you don't need pages four through ten, you can always highlight and delete them. You can just keep the pages you want. Okay? So that's called file printout. Scanner printout. If you have one of those printer, scan, fax machines or whatever, or any sort of scanner hooked up to the machine that you're using, then you can scan the image straight into OneNote if you'd like. You don't have to go to your hard drive or network first. Record audio and video. This obviously works better on a laptop or it's fine on a desktop as long as you have a camera or a microphone, okay? So you, can, so you can go to a meeting, let's say you're taking a deposition and you want to record it, make sure you tell everybody you're recording, but I can click on record audio if this works, and it should start recording your audio. Now, the neat thing is, not only does it record audio, record audio, but if I, let's say I want to discuss macros with you. If I type in the word macros, and then we start talking about some other things, and then I say, okay, we're done with that, and now we're going to start talking about Word and all the neat things about Word. And we talk about Word for a while, and then later on, Excel comes up. By typing into your screen like this as you're recording, notice your record is up here. I'm going to now stop recording. I'm going to keep audio search. Instead of just being able to press play, which will start it from the beginning, I can come down here and notice there's a little play button next to each one of these. And so I can start the playback from that point. Is that not cool? So I can click on this, talk about some other things, and then I say, okay, we're done with that. And now we're going to start talking about Word and all the neat things about Word. And we talk about Word for a while, and then later on, Excel comes up. And it even shows you that now it's on Excel, right? Now, notice that it does back up a few seconds. Did you see that? That even though I clicked on Word, it was like a couple seconds before that. But how cool is that to have all these new stop start points um, that you can get? Now, that is for an audio recording. Uh, again, if you want a video recording, I hate this the most because it's a video of me, but you can click on video recording. And as long as you have a camera, and hopefully you'll turn the camera the other direction, but you can do whatever you want there. And I'm going to get rid of this so that I can stop this. Um, stop this. There we go. And then to play back your recording, your turn video. The camera, and hopefully you'll turn the camera the other direction, but you can do whatever you want there. And I'm going to get rid of this so that I can stop this. Okay. So that's enough. Um, but so anyway, those are both on the insert menu, being able to insert audio and video. So what if you now wanted to put that video into a totally different folder or document? Well, like, not a different document, but if you wanted to go, 
a different note. If you want it to go anywhere, you can either cut and paste or drag, or if it's a whole different, if you want to drag this whole page somewhere else, like maybe this wasn't supposed to be in Thomas, maybe this was a Jones video, I would just take this, drag it to Jones, and now you've got it in Jones. Here's the video. And what if you wanted it both, like, copy it? You would copy it. And so what I do is I drag, okay? The difference between dragging to move and dragging to copy is one key. What's that key? <clears throat> it's the control key. Notice that before I drop it, if I hold my control key down, do you see that plus? That means it's going to copy it, not move it. That's in every single application, everything you do. So this afternoon we're having, well, ex anyway, so in Excel, if you were doing, wanting a new worksheet, you should just be dragging the worksheet tab and then just holding your control key. Control drag is amazing. So I just am holding my control key down. And so I've got video recording now over here in Jones v. Jones and video recording in Thomas v. Thomas. So dragging is always moving. Holding your control key down before you drop it will copy. Okay? So that's also true. You know, we created those meetings. If I have another meeting tomorrow and I'd like to start with this, I can drag this page down to the bottom or wherever I want. Before I drop it, hold my control key down, let go, and I've got two identical pages. Always control dragging will copy for you. Okay, so we are on the insert menu and we've looked up through uh, recording video, inserting date, time, and date and time. The reason I'm not too concerned about any of those is when you type any note, I would, well, when you start any new page, it's going to put date and time in for you. And if you share your folder, then it will keep track of every single note. There will be a date and time and your initials associated with it. So that, if I look at uh, view, notice that I can show authors. Now, unfortunately, there's only me here because this is um, this is the first time this has been used, and I haven't shared this. But you would see, like SR off to the side, if, if this were a shared notebook for Sandy Rylander, and if you pointed to it, it would show SR, and it would show the date and time that it was created. So that, if you ever wanted to look at, hey, what are the things that happened in the last seven days, or what are the things that this particular author did, or whatever, you could do that. Okay, so it makes it super simple to look at things. Now, earlier today, you were asking, what does Doc to Desktop do, which is on your toolbar? And it is one of the neatest features. What it does, let's see if I can start Word. Now, you have to make sure that this is going to work in Word, Internet Explorer, and PowerPoint. And you have to make sure that wherever you're going to be using this, that you have to have the document saved. Because how can it hyperlink to something that it doesn't know where it is? So if it's PowerPoint or Excel, so I've saved my document now, okay? And I'm going to go over to OneNote, and I want to start taking notes on this document. So here's OneNote. And let me click on a new page just to give myself a clean page. And I'm going to click on Doc, doc to Desktop. What it does is it shoves OneNote over into the right-hand corner, tries to give you as much space on the page as possible, so everything up here is pretty much hidden. So you want to make sure you're on a new page and you're ready to go. And then you can either click or drag in your document. So if I want you to, to know that what I want you to look at is right here, I can just click there. If I want you to know that you should be looking at this entire paragraph, I can select it. Whatever you do is how it will come up when you link to it. So if this is selected, it's going to be selected when I come back. If it's clicked, it's going to be clicked when I come back. Does that make sense? So I'm going to come over here and say this paragraph, blue, paragraph is too wordy or whatever it is that I want to do because my partner who's working on this with me, they're going to look through this later.
these sticks, whatever. And then I'm going to come down here just to show you the difference. I'm going to come down here, click, and um, please check this. Now, notice as soon as I start typing, do you see how there's a W next to it? If this were a PowerPoint, there'd be a P next to it. If it were Internet Explorer, there'd be an E next to it. So you know where it came from. If I point to it, do you see that it's also giving you a little snippet of the text that was surrounding where the edit is? So if the person coming in doesn't know, they can see a snippet of the text. Do you see that? So now I come here and I get rid of this. And my partners, and um, I come back into OneNote, and I just hit the dock to desktop again to bring it back up, okay? And now my partner is looking at this, and they want to actually work with it. So all they have to do is click on the W, and it will give you this message saying, hey, viruses can happen. I would click on don't show this again, but I'm going to click on OK. And it will actually open up Word and be right in the place that you're asking to look at. And notice that it's highlighted because I left it highlighted. But if I come to this other one and click on please check this, notice that it's clicked right in front of both. It's not highlighted because I didn't highlight. So again, you can do this on the internet. You can click or you can select. You can do this in PowerPoint. And if it is in PowerPoint, you're actually going to see a little picture of the slide that you're talking about, so it's a great way if you have a big policy and procedure manual or you have a big pleading or whatever to have the person just focus on your notes. Was there a question? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes, go ahead, and then I'll take the one in Seattle. Go ahead. On the okay, my question, okay, my question is that when you're using this process, can you use the um, audio to, uh, instead of typing the text, can you do audio to discuss a particular paragraph and in, in how you want it um, looked at and addressed? Great question. So, no. <laughs> the simple answer is no. But you can use a combination of the two because all you have to do is come here, let's say, highlight what you want, right? And you could, over here, you could say first issue or whatever, first. Whatever, just type one little bitty thing in. That's enough to make the link. And then underneath that, you can insert audio and you can start talking. So it wouldn't be that much more difficult to do exactly what you're asking for. You just need to establish the link just by typing one thing. You can even just type the number one and then hit the audio and record whatever it is. How come the words didn't start up with two words you didn't establish the link? It did. So why did you need to say first? Oh, I was just showing her that if she wanted to start something, this already did, remember? It's got the W already yeah. here. I was just saying if she were starting from scratch. No, that, that's right. You're already done with that. If you, if you wanted to, right here, you could start your audio. Absolutely. But I was just saying you could just type in as little as a number one or a first, and you're good to go. Does that answer your question okay? Yes, thank you. And question here. Yeah, I... I'm still unclear on how you linked the paragraph with two wording to the Word document. So you you clicked on something to desktop and then... Ah, okay. So yes, let me go ahead and uh, get rid of these things here. So what I did was I brought up my Word document, okay? And then I clicked on Dock to Desktop. Simply by clicking Dock to Desktop is going to start this feature called Linked Notes. That's all. So then... All I had to do was either select or click in this document wherever I wanted. And the way to create the link is just to come over here and take a note. You don't have to do anything except start taking a note, and it's linked. And it knows where, what section you're referring to because you just highlighted it? Or clicked in it. Clicked yes. It. So, before, so right now it's going to come here. But now if I want to take another note uh, based on, let's say, looks, maybe I don't like the word looks, I have to, I, I'm going to click over here. So you do have to click or select or do something over here, then come over here and take a note for it to know where to go back to. But that's all it is, is a click wherever you're referring to. It establishes the hyperlink right there. Click or select. Now, if you don't want the link notes, you can click on this guy here and stop taking link notes. But it thinks that if you're going to dock to desktop, you're doing it because you want to link notes. So 
it does it automatically. Any other questions? Okay. All right. So let's uh, undock here. Remember, I, I've taught this a few times where I forgot to state the word document and then link notes doesn't work. And I'm like, why is this not working? Well, it was my own fault. It wasn't that it wasn't working. You need to have it saved so it knows where to go to. Okay. So we covered most of the first page. Uh, the second sharing we talked about. Um, you can always share a notebook. This is where, remember earlier I said, one of the neat things is if you share a notebook, every single note that's taken is automatically going to be, have the person's initials and date time and that sort of thing. So that if you want to say, hey, I've been out of town for a week, I'd like to see what they did while I was gone, I can say just show recent edit. Or I can find by author, and then it's going to open up on the right-hand side, it's going to show by author what each person said, so I can look at what they said, okay? And even though I want to find by author, it's possible that I don't want to see the initials by everything, so I can also hide authors. So it's still there, but it's just not showing up screen, okay? Page version. If you're sharing and somebody changes everything that you put in and you say, oh, I don't think so, like my version better, you can go back and look at older versions and replace within 60 days. And that is also true uh, there is, if somebody deletes one of your pages or you delete your own page and you decide you want it back, you have 60 days to recover it. And then are, are both versions saved somewhere? So, no, right. a version will replace the other version. So you will always only have one version. So you can't have your version and the other person's version, but your versions are saved in here until the 60 days is up and then you're done. Then it goes away. It gets deleted. And so for 60 days, the new version and your original version are saved? They're saved. They are there, but you're only seeing whatever the most recent version is. You have to come here to see previous versions. And so let's say the original version I made the original version, somebody comes in and edits it, I don't like it. Yeah. I go back to the original version. What happened to the edited version? It goes away. You have a choice of one or the other. Okay. Yeah. Could you have copied the edited version and have it be yeah. a boss's version and Lisa's version? Yes, you could copy it. But if that's really what you're trying to do, then you should probably just not be changing each other's. You probably ought to just be adding you know, notes or whatever. But it is possible to do, absolutely. Uh, as long as somebody doesn't say delete all versions at some point uh, before the 60 days, which could happen, and the, and the notebook recycle bin. Please understand that both of these are specific to this notebook. So always go to the notebook where the page was deleted to find the deleted page. So, so I wouldn't be in the personal, if I was in the personal notebook looking at the, you know, the deleted items, and I didn't find anything, well, that's because it got deleted out of sample briefs. You have to be in the notebook where it was deleted. So it's not, it's not a uh, recycle bin for all of OneNote. It's a recycle bin per notebook. Each notebook has its own recycle bin. Folder. Excuse me? You can't do that just for the folder. It's per notebook. This notebook, this notebook, each notebook has its own. Because remember, each notebook can be saved separately. You could have a notebook on the web, a notebook on your C drive, a notebook on your network, and the recycling sits where you have the notebook, the OneNote notebook. Well, we have a quick question. Oh, um, there's a question? Yeah, so it's from the chat uh, from Lisa. Okay. Uh, what is the security with saving things on the web as far as like, client data and that sort of thing? Well, it is encrypted. There's two levels of security, and perhaps actually tech support can answer this better than I. Um, I, I can tell you there's two levels of security. And the so when I talk about creating your own MSN or Outlook or, um, or Hotmail account, those are more a personal kind of a thing, and so it's a more of a personal level of security. So it is secure, but it's not as secure as if, uh, your organization has purchased the SharePoint along with um, the ability to store things 
on that OneDrive. So when you go to file new, there should be a OneDrive option, and there's a OneDrive personal, and there's a OneDrive business if your business has it. If they, and so that's a higher level of security. And that's all I can tell you. You have to go to the website if you want to see, and I, I would look to the tech support department to see whether it's secure enough to hold your information. Um, I just have the personal security one, and you know it's where I store my stuff. But I know for a lot of organizations, especially if you're talking about legal stuff, that you need to have an additional level of security. So most likely, you're going to need to use the business version for at least for any notebooks that deal with you know issues that you can't afford to have to get out. But they are both secured. It's just a matter of how secure. Any other questions? Okay, there is a drawing ability. I'm going to finish up real quick here. There's a drawing ability. You can click on that and you can draw. If you have a uh, tablet, you, you know, and you can draw with a pencil, you can actually type things in. And notice here it says ink to text. If you wanted to, after you took your notes, you could click on ink to text and it would change it to typewritten. Be really careful with that. It does change it in place. And it's doesn't do a perfect job, depending especially on how well you your handwriting is. So this would be an area where I would copy the page, and I would do an ink to text on one of the pages. And that way, you can go back and compare your handwriting to what it converted it to and make sure everything is OK, and then delete your handwritten page if you want, handwritten page, excuse me. The nice thing is, whether you change it or not, anything you've handwritten is also searchable. So if I search for Sandy, it would still find it. So that's pretty cool. So it's more if you find it more legible or the poor people who work with you and have to share your notebook find it more legible, then you could do ink to text, which is over here. Okay, yeah. Would that work with, um, like, you know, these notes, could I stick the, paste these in there and have ink to text, put this in the text? That's a really good question. What she's asking uh, is she has some handwritten notes on a uh, on just note paper. Uh, would ink to text uh, ink to text wouldn't work because inking. So the answer is ink to text would not work. But what I think might work is if you scan the image in, it's possible. Uh, you know, only possible that if you right click. Remember how we said copy text from image. You could try that. My guess is no. But it's worth a try. It's one right click away from the answer. So um, you can also do things like, you know, inserting shapes like I just did with the arrow, that sort of thing. You can arrange things, which is sending front to back, and you can rotate things. Um, if you've got a picture in there and it's the wrong direction or whatever, you can do that sort of thing. Okay? We looked at review. Here's linked notes, which we talked about, same as Doc to Desktop. Spell check, that sort of thing. And I think we've talked about most of the viewing. Um, so one thing we didn't talk about was you can have color backgrounds for page. You can have ruler backgrounds or um, grid lines for pages if you want to. So those are all options for you. I don't really use these too much. What they have recommended is you might want to use these ruler pages if you're going to write because it might help you write a little bit more neatly so that it can actually convert. But other than that, page color, I'm not a big fan of things like this, but the one area that I could see using it would be, let's say you have three different cases going, and there's a page per case like what we have here. And all your, you know, all your titles, everything is identical. So you forget which one you're in because it's got all the same kinds of information then a color could alert you to, oh, okay, it's blue, so it's Jones. It's yellow, so it's Thomas. It could be a clue. So, OneNote is one of those things that, um, oh, by the way, the one last thing is if you have a Windows, which every computer now does, a little Windows tool on your keyboard, if you do Windows N, like for OneNote, you do get these little quick notes that appear. And if you want to type in uh, whatever you want on these little quick notes, so OneNote doesn't even have to be on top, but you just click it in, those little quick notes will go to unfiled notes, okay? 
And so then you can drag those to wherever you want you want to. Can you show us? Like put that in Joe? Yeah, just drag. So one of the key things in OneNote is before you start creating a notebook, I'm wrapping things up here because it's to the end of our class. Before you create notebooks and sections, please give some thought as to how can you make them. You want to make your notebooks small. You want to make them, um, and so, you know, is it going to be by case? Is it, you know, like before here we were thinking, well, is Jones going to be a notebook or is Jones going to be a section or is Jones going to be a page? What is it going to be? Give some thought in advance to how you're going to lay it out because it'll save you some time. That being said, building a notebook is a little bit like building a house. You think something's going to work for you, and in the end, it gets out of control big, and, and it doesn't work. The nice thing is that if it gets out of control big, and now you say, you know what? Family law needs to be its own folder, not just a, not just a, um, a, a section group. You just create another notebook. I, I said folder, I didn't mean that. You create another notebook, call it family law, drag the family law cases down, sections into it, and you're good to go. I'll give you one example. So since my husband's retired, we're going on more vacations. And so what we used to do is like Hawaii, we put all the information under Hawaii, including restaurants and things like that. Well, then for the next year, we would start a new one but we wanted to keep the old one because we wanted to see, you know, what airline had the best rates, that sort of thing. So I would, I made a new section group called Vacations Taken and put them under there. Well, after four or five years, you would start, you would have to look at four or five different years to find restaurants. It was, it was ridiculous. So I realized my organizational concept, which originally sounded good, hey, Hawaii, put everything under Hawaii, was no longer good. So I started a new section called Restaurant, and for every place we go now, there's a new tab for there's a new tab for Maui, a new tab for wherever, and that makes sense because year after year we add to it, and it's all in one place. So yeah, I didn't start out by doing the greatest job, but it's easy to regroup and say okay, and now Vacations Taken, which is a uh, section group is getting too big and I'd like it to get out of there, so I'm going to start a new notebook and I'm just going to drag those sections down. So you do the best you can in planning, but when it doesn't work out, the neat thing is usually it's just a matter of dragging or copying and pasting to get them right. Um, and don't forget, please, the amazing ability to create these um, these templates. That's going to, you know, to, to go to a template and to say save template like I made a restaurant table template saying, you know, what was the restaurant? Does it have happy hour? Is it on open table? You know, all these different things. And then I save the template. So for each new page, I don't need to recreate all that. It is so nice to use templates. So that's going to be a big time saver for you if you do it. Okay? Any questions on anything else? The more you use OneNote, I guarantee it's one of those programs I started out going, I don't know if I'm really going to use it or not. But the more you use it, the more applications you find for it, the more you will love it. And the fact that you have the ability to get it anywhere when a hotel turns you down and says, oh, sorry, we don't have your reservation, you can show them because you sent it from your email into your OneNote. You say, well, look, this is it. One last thing. Everything on your, everything on your, um, that you can do when you're in the application, you cannot necessarily do on your phone. The ones that are important, are when if you go if you have a table if I can find my table here I'm just going to quickly create one you cannot create new rows whoops you cannot create new rows uh, when you are on your phone okay that's just not a possibility so uh, that's not what I wanted to do so when I have a table I always have some blank rows down below because I can type into it okay. So I always, you know, even if I finished up here, what I'll do is I'll just hit my tab a little bit or whatever, have a few extra rows so I can do that. 
One last thing that I forgot to teach you is you can protect a section. You were talking about security before. I have my investments on here. I have passwords on here. So I just right click on a section and I say password protected and give it a password. Please make sure that you don't forget your password. Also know that if you're going to search the notebook, it will not search protected sections unless you've opened them up, unless you've unprotected them for the moment. You also cannot look at password protected sections on your phone, which for me doesn't bother me. I just won't look at those things when I'm on my phone. But there's no way to enter a password into your phone. So thank you so much for coming. Um, we actually covered more than we should have. We went over time, um, not just because we were late, but also just to finish uh, everything there is to know about OneNote. Please remember there's great notes in the handout. So I know it went fast. I was trying to make up for lost time. But it is truly an outstanding piece of software, and I hope that you all use it. Thank you for coming. And uh, look forward to seeing you in the later in the year for some other topics. Thanks. Thank, thank you. you.